Greetings, everybody. Welcome to today's Walk in the Avenues of Wisdom, walking through the wise books of Scripture. Today we're looking at Psalm 37. Uh, here we are towards the end of David's life, and we have the sum of his wisdom. This deals with the great riddle of the prosperity of the wicked and the afflictions of the righteous, which is such a perplexing subject to those of us who find ourselves looking at those that seem to get away with all kinds of dastardly deeds and live the high life whilst we are trying to be as good as we possibly can and yet life just happens to be a struggle. Why is it that the wicked live in mansions and can drive Ferraris and send their kids to the best private schools while the saints make do with renting a two-bedroom unit and driving our kids to public schools in a car that's held together with chewing gum? The seeming inequity of it all can have us feeling that life is unfair. And so David here gives many, many rules. Almost, It almost reads like a series of proverbs as it goes through an acrostic or alphabetical uh, poem. But giving us rule after rule, I'm just going to pick out uh, several of them and uh, mention them because these are really David's rules to help us live in tranquility amidst the contradictions of life. In verse 1 he says, do not fret because of evildoers, and don't be envious of them. Stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. God has given us heavenly riches of which they know nothing. So don't crave some, something simply because somebody else has them. Then in verse 4 he says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. That puts everything into perspective. You put God first and he'll look after you. You won't miss out on anything that is good for you. You'll have all the thrills that you can handle if you'll only make Jesus numero uno in your life. Verses five and six, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn and the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. So if you want to make a difference in the world, you've got to commit. But the eye of faith knows that it is not to a cause that we commit ourselves, but to the Lord. Commit your way to God and he'll fulfill your cause. So many causes in the world. Everybody's wanting you to support this and they're wanting, to, wanting you to uh, uh, look after this side of uh, their lives and they're trying to raise up money for one cause after another. It's not the cause that is the issue. It's committing your way to the Lord and then he'll look after all of the causes. Yes. Verse four, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Verse seven, we're in such a rush to get things done. We wanna make things happen, to make uh, a name for ourselves, to succeed, to get that house and to have that ministry. Quiet your heart, wait a minute, and wait for God's timing. Wait for God to move. When God moves, that's when you make your move. Not before, not after, when God moves. That's when you make your move. Timing is the secret to all success and the timing must be perfect. So it can be frustrating to see others succeeding uh, when your life isn't advancing. We feel like we're missing out. We feel like time is running out. God simply says, don't fret, don't fret. You see, it's a test. It's a test to see whether you'll wait on God or are you going to jump the gun and settle for second best? 
Are you going to settle for second best rather than have God's best? Verse 8. Refrain from anger, turn from wrath, and do not fret. It only leads to evil. This is really the difference between anger and bitterness. It's possible to be angry and not sin, but you can't become bitter. You can't become bitter without it leading to evil. Keep your emotions together and your conscience clean. What's the use of gaining the whole world and losing your soul and your family and your friends and your wife and your husband and your brothers and your sisters and your church and your business in the process? What's the use of gaining so much but losing those things that are nearest and dearest to you? Uh, Verse 23, this is number six. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his right hand. God delights in your way. He orders your steps. You don't need to worry about the way. God has ordered your steps. And if you happen to stumble along the way, God is going to hold on to you and he's going to hold on to you with his right hand. That's his strong hand. That's his holding and gripping hand. He's going to have a hold on you. So don't worry. God's got you. Number seven, wait for the Lord and keep his way. He'll exalt you to inherit the land. Verse 34. We can be like the prodigal and want our inheritance before our time, before we're ready. But if we keep God's way, then we grow mature so that when at last we're able to receive what God has all along intended for us, we're able to enjoy it, enjoy it in our maturity and enjoy it to the full. Instead of taking things for granted, we get to appreciate it. And finally, Number eight, in verse 37, consider the blameless, observe the upright. Who's your model? Who's your model? You've been looking at all the wrong people, idolizing celebrities. That's why we've been so disturbed. Rather than learn from those who are free of materialism and mammon, if you were to do that, If you were to learn from those who are free, truly free, from the materialistic traps of the evil things of this world, the gods of mammon, if you are able to be free of those or to observe somebody who is free of those and follow that, follow that way, follow that path, then you will genuinely find peace for your heart. So there's... Eight little rules out of this psalm that has many other, many other truths and many other insights and how we can live in tranquility in a world where there's so many contradictions. God bless you now. You have a great day and a great week. May God's hand be upon you. May you walk in wisdom, for wisdom is the answer to everything.